Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth. It's good to have you. Please consider subscribing and turning on your post notification bell if you are a crafter or just enjoy crafting videos. My goal at the moment is to have 2,000 of you lovely people subscribe to my channel. So please help me to achieve my goal so I can continue to bring you more crafting videos. So I'd like to take this opportunity to say a big, big thank you to the thousand of you that have subscribed to my channel. I'd like to thank you for your likes, your comments, your questions, your suggestions, your advice, and for sticking with me through those craft fails and those craft successes. I really, really appreciate it. And I just want to say a big, big, big thank you. Um, you have been amazing. <laughs> thank you so much. Today I'm going to be creating this personalised zipper pouch with a cute little embroidered sloth on the front. These are great for storing pens and pencils and other little bits and they are great for children and adults. So if you'd like to see how I do this, stay tuned. <laughs> So for this project I already have my fabric already cut to size, I have my uh, main fabric and my lining fabric all cut and they all have some uh, iron on interfacing on the back just to make the fabric a little bit more uh, sturdy and less flimsy. So I have three pieces of each. I also have some felt here just to give the uh, pouch a little bit more uh, padding as well. So I have that also cut ready to the size that I need. I'm going to be using these threads here. So I have a cocoa brown, which is going to be used for the branches of the tree that the sloth is um, sleeping on. I have a variegated thread here which I'm going to use for the name and it's green. I have a yellow green thread here which I'm going to use for the leaves of the tree. I have an ivory white here which is going to be for the face. I have a cinnamon here, which is going to be used for the body of the sloth. And then I have a white for the eyes and the black is going to be used for the details of the eyes, like the nose and the mouth and the pupils of the eyes. I also have my zipper uh, charm here which I created using printable shrink sheets. I have a video of how I created this. I will link that at the top. And I have some hardware here that we could use for hanging our little uh, zipper pouch and a bit of uh, leatherette here, black leatherette here. I have my hoop with my tearaway stabilizer already hooped and I have a little bit of cutaway stabilizer as well. I'm thinking I might need this when I am embroidering the name and the sloth because it's quite um, thread heavy and the tearaway might not be able to withstand all that sewing. So I've got this just in case. I've got a zipper here. This came um, on a continuous roll and it came with the um, zipper that you have to attach. Um, this is from Amazon, it's quite pretty. It's got all these lovely colors in there. And you're gonna need a lint roller to tidy up, get rid of any uh, fluffy bits. 
and I also have some masking tape to pin to uh, tape things back so it doesn't get into the way. I think that is everything I need for this project. I um, digitized this to myself in Embird. I will be bringing out a video of um, my steps of how I digitize this. So stay tuned for that in an upcoming video. So I think that is everything. So let's take you to the machine. So I have my design already loaded up in my machine. I am using the Janome Memorycraft 550E and whenever I load up my design I like to look at the steps step by step. So if I click on this, uh, this flower icon here it's going to tell me what the first steps are and the first step is the placement stitch for my zipper. So let's begin. Okay so I have my hoop already in and I'm going to be using the variegated thread for my main bit of uh, stitching. I'm hoping this variegated thread doesn't cause me any problems because the last time I used it it did cause an issue um, because it's a lot thicker so I'm hoping it doesn't cause me any issues with tension or anything like that being that I did uh, digitize this myself so let's have our fingers crossed for that So it's voiceover time again and yes you've guessed it I'm doing a voiceover because my neighbours were being really really noisy and playing very loud music. So here you can just see me putting down the uh, zipper tape and I'm just putting it over that uh, placement stitch that I just stitched out and I'm just going to tape it down with some masking tape to make sure that it doesn't move while the um, tack down stitch is being done. So I'm just taping it down with some masking tape. So now my zipper tape is nice and secure on the hoop and I'm just going to return it to the machine to do the tack down stitch. So the zipper tape is now sewn on and I'm just getting ready to attach the lower half of the pouch. I'm going to attach the lower part of the um, pouch this zipper tape is really really pretty, it's a rainbow zipper and it's sewed a little bit on my masking tape but that's easily removed. And now I'm just going to flip my hoop upside down so you're seeing the back of the hoop now where I'm going to attach the bottom half of the pouch, the lining fabric, onto the back and I'm lining it to what is the bottom of the zipper so it's right side down and I'm lining it to the bottom of that zipper tape and I'm going to attach it with masking tape And I'm doing it really gently because now I can flip it over and now that I am on a more flat surface I can press on the hoop a little bit more so that my stabilizer doesn't move and shift my design 
and then I'm going to place the exterior right side down and also lining it to the bottom of the zipper tape and I'm just going to tape that as well so nothing moves while it's in the machine and I'm going to return it to the hoop to tack those two pieces of material down so it's going to tack down my lining and my exterior fabric I'm now back at the table and I'm removing the tape that I used to hold the exterior fabric up because now I need to flip my exterior fabric down so it's right side facing up and I'm just going to finger press that in place I'm leaving my lining fabric where it is I'm not bringing that down just my exterior fabric and I'm finger pressing that I could have used an iron but it seems like my finger pressing is doing a good job and it's staying put. Now I need to add my felt underneath my exterior fabric and I'm just going to put it underneath making sure I butt it up to the stitch line that I've just done so it's nice and secure and I'm lining it up to that stitch that tack down stitch that I did for the exterior fabric and then I'm flipping my exterior fabric back down pressing it down really well and I'm attaching some masking tape to keep it in place and my design is from Creative Fabrica so the sloth design is from Creative Fabrica everything else I digitized myself I just introduced the file from Creative Fabrica into my software and I use Embird for all my digitizing so now I'm going to return it to the hoop where it's going to do a basting stitch on those three sides and then it's going to do a top stitch which is a triple bean stitch Now that that is done, it's going to start doing the main design. So it's going to need quite a few color changes, but I'm not going to keep stopping the video to do a color change. But when doing a thread change, uh, you always need to pull your thread from the bottom. So you pull it through the needle, you don't pull it backwards because that could damage your machine. So. The next few steps are just the design, so enjoy the stitch out.
okay so the main design is done so I'm just going to remove my hoop and I'm going to go back to the table where I'm going to attach the other parts of the pouch so the top panels of the pouch are going to be added so here's the little sloth, he's just so cute, so 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 cute. So I've got a few uh, tails there that I just need to trim. And then I'm flipping my hoop upside down and I'm loving the back of my um, stitch out, it looks great, that always brings me joy. And now I'm flipping my lining fabric down. And I'm putting that in place with some masking tape. Now I'm taking the top panel of my lining, so the top of my pouch, and I'm lining it to the top of my zipper, making sure it's right sides down. And I'm also going to tape that in place remembering not to press too hard on the back of the hoop so that it doesn't shift i flipped my hoop right side up and then i'm pressing down onto that masking tape so i know it's nice and secure and now i'm going to put the exterior fabric also right side down and i'm also going to line it to the top of my zipper tape And I'm going to secure that with masking tape. Lots of masking tape is needed with these pouches. So now I'm going to return it to the machine where it's going to tack those two pieces of fabric down to the zipper tape. So my top lining and top exterior fabric are now attached to my zipper tape and now I am taking off the masking tape from my exterior fabric and I'm putting in a felt underneath my exterior fabric. I'm finger pressing it down to keep it down and put in my felt underneath and yeah this felt was not a good idea but I just keep going anyway because then I discover why I shouldn't have put the felt in the first place so I'm taping that down and I'm going to now do a bean stitch just to tack that down I'm back at the table now so I put a safety pin there just to hold my um, zipper pull in place so it doesn't come off my lining fabric now I'm removing the tape and I'm flipping it up and I'm finger pressing that again being really careful not to shift my stabilizer so a flat surface is always the best place to kind of press um, any bits of fabric and then I'm going to tape my lining up now. So now my lining fabric is up and so is my exterior fabric. And I'm using lots of masking tape. Masking tape is your friend. Well, it's my friend anyway when I'm doing pouches. Now that that is in place, I'm pressing it down again on a flat surface. I don't want anything to shift because the stabilizer shifting at this point would ruin the design. Now this is a really important bit. I have to cut into my stabilizer. So I have to cut and expose my zipper tape. So I need to cut and expose the teeth of my zipper tape and I need to be really careful that I'm not cutting into my fabric 
all into my zipper tape. So I'm cutting a rectangle and exposing my zipper tape. This bit is really important because if it's not done, I would not be able to um, turn my project at the end. Another really crucial bit now is that I need to open my, my zip. So roughly about the middle would be okay. And I'm just holding it down with some more masking tape. Yep, you've guessed it, more masking tape. Just so that that um, zipper pull doesn't get in the way of my needle and wreck my machine basically. This is the point where I'm also going to attach my hardware. So I've put my swivel clasp on some faux leather and I'm making sure that the swivel clasp is facing the inside. So it seems like it's on the wrong side of the um, pouch, but once we turn the whole pouch out at the end, it will be on the outside. So I'm attaching it near the zipper pull because I think it would look better there. And I'm sticking it down with masking tape. Lots of masking tape. And I'm also sticking down the actual swivel clasp. I don't want it to move around in my machine. So on top of all that, I'm putting my back exterior fabric and I'm putting it right side down and I'm going to tape that in place making sure it's covering the whole design and when it stitches out everything stitches out beautifully more tape Now I'm putting the uh, felt on top of that and again this felt was not necessary which I discovered at the end of the project because it made it, yep, it made it really hard to turn. But I'm just going to return this to the hoop where it's just going to do just a little stitch at the bottom. So what that stitch does is it attaches the felt, the back panel and the front together, which is important for turning. So here I'm just removing some of the masking tape that's sandwiched in between the felt and the uh, back exterior panel, because I don't want that sewn in because we are on the final steps. The project is almost done now. I'm just making sure at this point that everything is where it's supposed to be. And then, yep, more tape.
So this is the lining fabric now. So I've flipped my hoop upside down and this is my back lining fabric. And I'm just looking here because it looks a little bit smaller than um, the actual design but I'm going to just go with it. I think it's fine. I don't think it's gonna to be too much of an issue. It's just very exact. I'd rather it was larger than uh, the space that I needed for the back panel, but I think it worked out fine in the end. So I'm just taping it on again. Lots and lots of tape. And that lining fabric was uh, right side down. Now it's back in the machine and it's just going to bean stitch all around the edge where it attaches every bit of the fabric in, including the faux leather for the swivel clasp. And we are done. I am now unhooping. The project is done. I'm removing all of that masking tape. And I need to trim away some of this bulk on the seam, but I have to remember not to trim away the part that I'm going to use to stitch my um, seam at the end after I finish sewing. So I've just done a little uh, pen mark there just to help me not forget. And I'm clipping that side first and I'm going to flip it up so I don't get scissor happy and actually cut that bit away because that bit is really important to do the stitching at the end. We need that seam allowance. So I'm just pinning that in place. And then I'm going to cut around the whole project now leaving about maybe five millimeters around the edge. And it's tear away stabilizer, so I can just tear it away. So I'm just explaining here that I didn't use that extra bit of stabilizer that I thought I was going to use. I actually forgot to put it in, but it's stitched out fine. And now I'm just going to cut around the project. So this was the tricky part. This was the difficult part the actual turning. It was really hard to turn because I had all of that felt and yeah, it made it really hard to turn. Um, I'm also showing that I actually, um, you know, I clipped my corners so that I can get a good, nice uh, pointy corner. But this was a struggle, turning the pouch the right side out and I had to be really careful here so I don't rip anything so now this is the lining and now I can sew that little part at the bottom. I'm just gonna hand stitch that uh, turning hole at the bottom. Just with a needle and thread that can be sewn or um, there is actually a, like double-sided uh, seam tape that you can um, attach to your um, turning holes and just iron it in place but I went with a needle and thread 
and I just stitch that closed. And to stitch it close, you just go from side to side and it just gives a more uh, invisible stitch. So I'm going from one side to another. And it just makes it a less visible stitch. So it's time for the final reveal. My uh, turning hole has been stitched shut. I'm just unzipping my zipper and I'm going to turn the whole project the right side out. And this is where I discovered that I used too much uh, fleece. I didn't need the fleece at all because I didn't like the way it looked. After turning it made it really bulky. But it's still cute. So I actually did the project again minus all the felt and it looked much better which you're going to see shortly. So I decided to redo the pouches, that was the first one that I did and it looks more bulky and not flat and I didn't like the corners because I wasn't able to poke at the corners. I wasn't able to poke at the corners properly so here is the second one that I've done. With the second one, I decided to put a black clasp on it and we can see here that the corners are more poked out. It looks much better, so I am happier with this one. So, if you found this video interesting or useful, please like and subscribe if you haven't yet done so and turn on your post notification bell and make sure you check all so you never miss an upload from me. Please feel free to interact with the comment section by leaving any comments, questions or any suggestions about any videos that I should do in the comment section below. You're also welcome to join our Facebook group, it's Craft Junkie Studio and I will leave the link in the description box below. And as always, don't have a good day, have an amazing day. Till next time, bye!